I want you to know, I grew up in a home for old people. My father was the administrator, and we had five rooms in this home. And every as a little girl, this was 1940, I opened the door and there were my friends, the old people across the street, across the hallway. Hi, Mrs. Lou, I'm going to school now. And when I come home, we'll write everything down that the teacher said in my diary. And I still have that diary. I went back to this home in 1963 to work um, as a social worker, and my, my background being psychology. And I learned validation by my mistakes. When an old person would say to me, I wish I was dead, I use sympathy. I know just how you feel. This morning I woke up and I wished I was dead too. But you know what I did? I got myself a nice cup of tea and I felt so much better. Here, old lady, where's an old lady? Here's an old lady. <laughs> Here's a cup of tea, you'll feel so much better. This 90-year-old woman, she drank the tea, but she didn't feel better. She had lost a baby a long time ago and she never grieved. And now in her old age, she had to cry. The tea didn't help her. She swallowed the tea, she swallowed her emotions, and she stopped talking. Then I tried redirection and diversion. Look, don't worry about dying. It's a beautiful day. Look outside, the sun's shining. We'll take a little walk. We'll play some music. You love music, and you'll feel so much better. Well, the old lady, she took a walk. She played the music, but she didn't feel better because her, her child had died and no one was listening. Then I learned about validation through listening. I found that all the people had a good reason behind what they did, behind their behavior. I learned first, the other techniques, I, people feel sorry for people, they have sympathy. Sympathy, you're objective. Empathy, you feel what that old person feels. Even though you're not going through what they're going through, you feel with them, not just for them. And then with empathy, the validation techniques almost always work. The other techniques are a little superficial. So how do you get empathy? First, I have to be honest with myself. I can't stand that old lady every day. I want to go home, I want to go home. <laughs> We're human beings. If I'm full of my own emotions, I can never cross the street to the side of this old lady. Too much traffic. So now I have to take my feelings and put them away and then center myself, which is a way of breathing. So you take all your own feelings, we'll get rid of them, and you're then like an empty vessel. You can take in the feelings of that old person. Then I learned to rephrase. Rephrasing is exquisite listening. How does that person talk? Is it fast? Is it slow? What is the pitch? What is the tempo? And then you say what that old person has said in a question, as if you're asking, is this what you mean? So, if an old lady says to you, I wish I was dead. Her voice was low. After wish, there was a little pause. I was dead came very fast. So then you ask, you don't want to live anymore. And now I trust you because you really care. That's right. I don't want to live anymore. I have just enough. And you don't say, oh, Naomi, don't cry. Everything is fine. It's not so bad. No, it's not fine. I have to cry. And you help me get rid of all my feelings. And then we can take a walk and, and, and play music. So you use polarity. Polarity is the extreme, the positive extreme or the negative. In this instance, it's negative because I feel so bad. So you ask, what is the worst thing about being alive that you want to die? The worst thing? I can't walk. Oh, I walk so much in my life. And you listen as I cry. Crying is healing. 
When a person can't cry anymore, the body is all stopped up. When I'm finished crying, you can use reminiscing. Where were you born? That you walked so much in your life. Huh. I was born in the Black Forest, and my husband and I, we, we walked with our dog. And now I feel safe with you. And also, so you, you also don't lie to the person. I learned not to lie. Today we learn a therapeutic lie. If an old person says to you, Mother, 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 don't worry, Naomi. Your mother's right around the corner. She'll be here in a few minutes. Well, I'll sit down because you're telling me my mother's alive and I want her to be alive and I see her with my mind's eye. But deep down, I know my mother is dead. I buried her. I saw her in her grave. But I don't want to know that. So I don't quite trust you. I know something's wrong. So you don't have to lie. You rephrase with empathy. Mother? Mother? Naomi, is there something wrong with your mother? Yes. Oh, yes. And you mirror my movements. Where is she? My mother. Oh, mother. Oh, mother. Is she sick? Oh, yes. What do you want to tell her? Mother, I love you. I love you. And you listen, and this old woman cries. A few minutes later, that same old woman will most likely say to you, my mother, She's with the dear Lord. She's not with us anymore. She's gone. I always knew my mother was dead, but a few minutes before, she was alive. So you don't argue and you don't lie. You listen with empathy. If an old woman says to you, and you're my daughter, you stole my wedding ring, you send her. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if people use symbols in order to express their emotions, a symbol is something like a ring or someone like a person that substitutes for something or someone from the past. I, I am now 88 years old, and my husband died when I was 20. I never grieved. I swallowed my feelings and I went to work my whole life. But those feelings that were inside, they grew, they bubbled, they hurt. But I still am never honest, I'm never responsible. So if you ask me, what kind of a life did you have with your husband? Ask me. What kind of li life did you have with your husband? Oh, we had a wonderful three years. It was so nice. We had a honeymoon, nice clothes. I'll never say asshole. I never should have married him. I only married him because I was pregnant. Oh no, that's buried. But I want to express my feelings. So what do I do? I use my wedding ring as a symbol. This ring is a honeymoon I never had. The nice clothes, the house by the sea, the love, the passion. That's my ring. And in the middle of the night, I wake up, I take my wedding ring and I hide it under my underwear. And I go back to sleep. And the next morning, you stole my wedding ring. And you argue with me. You say, but mother, I, I, I didn't. I'll tell you. I'll show you where it is. Let me see. It's not in the story. Mother, here's your wedding ring. I found it. How did you know where it was? Because <laughs> you hid it there yourself, you thief. The more you argue, the more I have to fight you. Because deep down, I know I hid it myself. I hid it because it's the only way I have of expressing my feelings that I have been cheated and robbed of a happy life, and you did it. I never said, it's me. I shouldn't have married when I was 17. I'm responsible. I was never honest with my emotions. My whole life, I blamed somebody else. So you don't argue, you don't lie. You listen with empathy and you rephrase. I stole your wedding ring, Mom. That's right, you did. 
Mom, how old were you when you got that ring? I was young. I was only 17. You worked tired all your life. Yes, I did. And what do you do for me, uh? And you listen while your mom cries. And when I'm through crying, whew, I feel so much better. And you will find every time I hide my ring, if you listen and help me express my feelings, I won't hide my ring anymore. Because feelings that are expressed and validated with empathy are relieved. Thank you very much. Yeah.